Okay, welcome to this tutorial. Uh, it's going to be a quick rundown of how you can deploy your first smart contract to the Juno Smart Contract Hub. Uh, in this case, a meme coin. Uh, the very first smart contract that was deployed to a previous testnet on Juno was a meme coin, so it seemed like a good, a good place to start. Uh, if you've not uh, heard of Juno before, Juno is a smart contract hub in the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, it's going to be IBC enabled by default and will go live hopefully in July 2021 when the underlying smart contract uh, engine module uh, Cosmwasm hits 1.0.0. At the moment there is a test net up if you want to come and get involved. Um, it's called Lucina. Uh, you can find out more information on Discord. Um, I'll put a link in the description. And there is currently a competition going on called Hack Juno, which is uh, there's about 1% of the total supply of Juno um, available for individuals or teams that uh, pr provide uh, useful tooling to the community, in particular smart contracts that are useful to the community. So if you're interested in building, developing, deploying smart contracts, now is the time to get involved. Um, again, more information at the GitHub repo. Cosmos Contracts, Hack Juno, more information on Discord, link in the description, check it out. So we're gonna make a meme coin, what's involved in that? The most obvious initial thing is that you have to install all your dependencies and prep the box. I'm not gonna cover that in this uh, video. There are descriptions of what you need on docs.junochain.com, which is where the documentation for Juno is held. Um, the long and short of it is that you're going to need Rust, Go, and the Juno D daemon. You can build Juno from source if you like, or you can grab a release from the GitHub page. Uh, Go 1.16.3 if you're going to build the current uh, main branch of Juno, and Cargo uh, 1.49 plus for building smart contracts uh, using a compatible version of Cosmwasm. If you can run which Juno D and get some output, then you're good to go. If you can run cargo version, then you're probably good to go. So what's next? Next is big brain time. We're gonna do the main stuff that's involved in working with a smart contract. We're gonna build a contract, store a contract, initialize a contract, and then finally, we're going to execute the contract. So what is a smart contract? A smart contract is just a piece of code written by a programmer that can be stored on chain, and then executed on chain. So once a smart contract is stored on a chain, um, it might actually be possible for multiple people to initialize different versions of it. Um, so uh, it's quite kind of hard to see necessarily with uh, why you would want to do this, but in the case of a meme coin, let's say, uh, you could make it so that the arguments for initializing what the name of the coin is, the total supply and whatnot, are all sent in as arguments when it's actually run for the first time, when it's initialized. And so if one developer stores it on the chain, somebody else can actually initialize it and work with it. So you can have multiple uh, meme coins based on the same uh, program, the same computer program that's actually working under the hood. And as luck would have it, the contract that we're about to work with has that property. You actually pass in all of those arguments when you initialize it. Then finally, the execution step is simply when you execute commands that the contract or the code, if you like, understands in order to do things, to make actions happen. So first, most simply, we need to actually build the contract. So we're going to have to uh, go and grab the code. Um, the code in this case being on from the Cosmosm examples repo, which you can get from here. So you'd run this. Uh, we actually already have it on this box. As I mentioned, this is provisioned uh, as the faucet for the current testnet. So we've got all of the prerequisites already installed. Um, so we're going to go into the, here's one I made earlier mode. Uh, so you want to do these steps, but spell them correctly. <laughs> git fetch, uh, git checkout. Uh, so this might change a little bit on future test nets, but at the moment uh, that's the current working version that works with 
Uh, I think we're on uh, Cosmwasm standard 0.16.0. Like I said, we're, we're aiming, we're going to go mainnet on version one, but uh, and Cosmwasm core is I think 0.14 at the moment. So this version 0.10 for Cosmwasm examples is compatible with 0.14 of core. And you can see that from the commit that it's telling us we are using there. There's actually a compatibility chart in the main Cosmwasm repo if you want to know which part of which element of the module is compatible with which. We're using the Cosmwasm examples specifically because these are example contracts that are not production grade, but they're optimized for readability. So if you're new to this, you can read them and hopefully work out pretty quickly what's going on. If you want production grade contracts, there's, a, there's a, another repository called Cosmwasm Plus, which does have production grade contracts ready to go. But you should be aware that in using them and developing with them further, um, they have a copyleft license, I believe. So you need to contribute the code you write back to the community. Uh, the only other thing to know is that both of them also have a template. So if you know what you're doing with Rust, you can just initialize a new template based on them. Okay, so we're in Cosm Wasm examples repo. We've checked out uh, the version 10 uh, tag. And so we're now going to find the ERC20 folder. And we're going to compile our contract. So the code's already written. Let's imagine we wrote it ourselves. We obviously didn't. Um, now we need to build our contract and then store it on the chain. So those are the two next steps we're going to do. Um, again, we're, we're not. It's this is not IQ nine thousand stuff yet. I'm, I'm not even sure there is anything in this video that's going to be IQ nine thousand. But this will give you the tools you need to to do your IQ nine thousand four D chess move in the future as part of the Hack Juno competition when you're going to write amazing, useful tooling for the community, for the Juno community, and earn uh, you know, real prizes in Juno tokens on mainnet. Okay, so we're gonna build it. You could obviously build the contract using uh, Cargo Wasm, but uh, there's you want to build an optimized version, right? Because when it's uh, when the contract is run, it has a cost. The CPU time in the virtual machine that's running the code on chain uh, is going to charge you gas for the time that it spends executing. So you want to make the most efficient version of the code possible. Cosmwasm uh, or Confio, the organization behind them, have an optimized uh, Docker. Uh, image that will optimize your code so that you can run it and deploy it on the chain and it will cost the least gas possible. So in even though uh, the Cosmwasm examples repo isn't sort of production grade contracts, we're going to act as if it is and we're going to use uh, this repository, uh, sorry, this Docker image to build the code uh, in our repository. And we're going to have to provide a password because it requires sudo and then it's optimizing it and boom, it's done. So. It's going to take a little bit longer for you. Um, the Docker image was already on uh, this machine, so it'll take a little bit of time to download and then uh, to build a non-cached version. The main thing at the moment is to just note that the tag on that Docker image is 0.11.4, which is the current compatible version with the things that we're using here. Okay, so it's built it. CD artifacts to see the output, and we can see CW ERC20 dot wasm. Amazing. Now we're going to store that on chain. So uh, Juno D TX Wasm. So you see us now beginning to interact with the Wasm module of Juno. And we can use the help flag to see a couple of those commands. And the other one that we're really going to lean on heavily in the future, or at least is going to be very interesting to us in the future, is the execute one. So we'll come back to that in a little bit. So Juno D. TX wasm store cwelc20.wasm from, and then you'll need your key here, in this case my self-delegate key for the validator that I'm running for the testnet with the faucet and whatnot. Uh, and you don't care how much gas it is. And uh, whatever. Well, so that's the, the code. And then it's going to say, hopefully, Happy days. Okay, so there is something important to note here. You can see down here uh, code ID value eight. Now you need to save this. There's if you go on to docs.juniorchain.com, you can see an example where we actually wrap this command in um, 
essentially capture the output of this command, pass it to uh, JQ and snip out that code so that it can be put into a variable in the shell so you can work with it later because you're going to need to know that code ID. Um, I'm kind of happy just looking at um, JSON so I didn't bother doing that. But important thing to note, code ID is eight. That is the, the numeric value of the code uh, sorry, of the contract on the chain. It means there are seven other contracts that have been put on the chain before this one. Um, and that will become important in a minute. So now we've so we've built our contract, we've stored it, and now we want to initialize it. So as I mentioned, the way we interact with contracts is primarily via passing, well, we're at the moment passing arguments on the command line, but there's also REST interfaces, RPC interfaces, and they all have the same way of passing arguments to a contract, and that is serialized JSON, which is then uh, parsed, validated, and used as arguments within the Rust code that's executed um, to run the contract, which means we're going to need to serialize some JSON. So uh, let's do this the way that I prefer to do it. And We've got our cal say with Chuck Norris. So uh, I just use Node.js um, to encode my arguments. So uh, const init hash. All right. So the meme coin that I'm going to instantiate is called Worm Coin. It's because I've been playing a lot of Worms WMD during the pandemic with some friends of mine. Uh, it's going to have the symbol worm, six decimals, initial balances. That's again, that's my self-delegate address and uh, arbitrary amount. So, and then you can see, that's, if you're not familiar with Node, that's that. And then we're actually going to want to do this, if I can spell it right. Okay, so then you want to save this JSON because this is your argument um, that you're going to pass to the initialize call. So every, uh, every interaction we have with the contract on chain, we're going to need to serialize some JSON, okay? And if you're curious about what arguments a thing takes, there is a useful way, an easy way of finding out, I should say, which is you can go into, so if you go to tree schema, you can see there's several schema files there which specify the arguments taken by each one of those different instructions to the smart contract. So in our case, we, we actually care specifically about uh, the, we care about the instantiate message in this case, right? So um, I've just realized I kept saying initialize, not instantiate, but so if we look at the instantiate message, you can see the properties that it allows there, and that's why we chose those ones that we've just encoded as JSON, okay? So now we're ready to instantiate our contract. We said it was eight, and we've got our values there, as well as our address. We need to provide it with a initial balance and some gas, so let's do that. Uh, here's one I made earlier, as I used to say on British TV which very much dates my age. Um, okay, cool. So that looks like it's worked. Let's see if we can work with it. So in order to work with it, first of all, we're going to need uh, to find out what its address is. So we can do that with this nifty little incantation. Okay, so this is the address of the contract itself. And now this means that we can uh, query against that. So first of all, let's just find out whether it did in fact create the coin and instantiate uh, and assign some to this address. And there we are, it has, great. So. Let's just check now if it's sent any to the, uh, let's just check another address to check that the balance is zero. So uh, I happen to know the faucets address on this test net, so let's use that. And we can see the balance is zero. You can probably see where this is going. It's quite sad 
although not particularly unuseful. I mean, it's not like the force that's going to be sending worm coin to anybody, but we might want to send, I mean, we've just created a meme coin. We're super excited. We want to send it to somebody. Let's do that. Um, so again, we could look in that schema that we just saw previously. And uh, so there's one you can see here for execute message. That will show you all of the different arguments you can pass to execute. So remember execute is uh, Juno D T X Wasm execute H. You can see here, this is, uh, so the contract address and then our JSON and then uh, an optional flag for amount and then optional flags, right? So this is why the schemas are super useful for looking at the code and working out exactly what's happening and how uh, what arguments you need to pass it in order to make it work. And you probably want to, if you're developing your own contracts, write some documentation for this so it's completely explicit to the user, um, especially for anything that's production critical or you know users or developers might be interacting with. But you know, for the purposes of just learning this stuff, you can just have the schemas open in a, in your favorite text editor or you know just browse them on the command line like I'm doing here. Um, I happen to know what the uh, instructions are to do a transfer, so I'm going to just do that here, where I'm sending from the owner, which is the address that we instantiated Wormcoin against, uh, to the faucet, and uh, it should send it 200 Wormcoin, and we're about to find out. Um, let's go find the faucet again. And we see now it has a balance of 200. Okay, so I realize, um, actually, no, I probably, I don't know if I do talk slowly or quickly, but we still have gone through this relatively quickly. Uh, we've built a contract, we've stored it on the chain, we've initialized it, we've executed it, and used it to send uh, some of our newly uh, created um, worm coin to somebody else, right? And somebody else could use this contract, initialize it, create their own um, meme coin now. So this kind of uh, sort of shows you how uh, certain things that maybe are potentially valuable in, in on uh, maybe older networks uh, are, are, are almost effectively redundant um, on a smart contract system unless they have some kind of unique selling point or actual utility to the community. And this brings us neatly back around to Hack Juno, which is, like I said, currently started. You can uh, join in by uh, jumping in the Discord, finding out more about it, going to github.com, um, uh, Cosmos Contracts, Hack Juno to discover. There's a variety of suggestions and things the community's already said would be useful, as well as ideas for things you might want to attempt. Um, and uh, if you get stuck or you have any other questions, then, like I say, jump into Discord, have a conversation with some people there. People are generally pretty friendly. Apart from that, if you've got anything else you want to know about, pop a question down below in the comments, or again, jump on Discord and find uh, your friendly neighborhood dev. Um, so that's about it. Party on, dudes.